about five foot five, brown eyes, light chestnut hair, and as fine a pair of legs as ever walked into this office. You can't believe she's not six feet tall. She carries herself with complete certainty. She could look like a completely different person from one moment to the next. I don't know how she does it. Being raised by actors, one luxury was that my mom and I watched movies together all the time. And at a very early age, I was fortunate enough to see Meet John Doe. Look, genius. Now look. Suppose there was a John Doe and he walked into this office. What would you do? It was the first time I ever saw Barbara Stanley. I completely fell in love with everything about her. Her humanity, her incredibly authentic nature and style. Even for me, as this seven or eight year old kid, she made everything feel so modern. It was as though she'd done it yesterday. She was the first actress whose picture I hung on my bedroom wall. She meant the world to me. No matter how hard it is to strike out on my own, I'm gonna do what I think is right for me. Proud, dignified, and brilliant. Well, what do you know about that? One of the boys, and with an intellect that could create, frankly, the stigma and typecasting of one of those smart-talking actresses. Why, did somebody in your home play the piano? Anybody that had a nickel. Hmm? Yet every single performance is a totally different energy. She's a filmmaker through her work. She tells the whole story of the movie in her performance. I don't see why I have to do all the dirty work. There must be plenty of rich old dames just waiting for you to push them around. You find them, I'll push them. She obviously had a very brilliant and intelligent sense of humor, and she just had her timing down. And she knew how to play her partner and make them wonder what she was going to do next. Comfortable? Yes, very. She brought us the sassiest, most selfish, hilarious character in The Lady Eve, where she's the card shark playing Henry Fonda, the rich guy without any street smarts. And to see that woman on the train on their honeymoon recounting for him all the lovers she's had is one of my favorite scenes ever in any movie. I wonder if now would be the time to tell you about Herman. Herman? Herman? Who was Herman? And in Ball of Fire, this wild, hilarious sexual dynamo teaches elderly professors how to dance. Hiya, Foxy, come on, hook on! She's so delightful. I mean, she made any comedy work. Excuse me. But it was the same authenticity that made her able to do dramatic films. I want you to be nice to me. Like the first time you came to the house. When you watch Double Indemnity, somewhere your morals as an audience get completely mixed up. Only sometimes you wish he was dead. Perhaps I do. And you wish it was an accident. And you had that policy for $50,000. Is that it? Perhaps that too. As she's plotting to take out a life insurance policy on her soon-to-be-murdered husband, you're worried for her, you're worried she'll be found out, you're feeling both protective of and horrified by her. There's that tracking shot through the shop of her and Fred McMurray, and she takes my breath away. She was drop-dead gorgeous, and, in that role, evil. I loved you, Walter, and I hated him. But I wasn't going to do anything about it, not until I met you. You planned the whole thing. I only wanted him dead. It's terribly confusing, thanks to how seamless she is at manipulating us. Even we, the viewers, are the victims in Double Indemnity. I remember as a kid, my school bus would drive over Coldwater Canyon every day in Beverly Hills, and the elderly gentleman bus driver would point and say, you see that house? Stanwick lives there. I was mesmerized. To me, inside that home was not only a great actor, but an outspoken, fearless female voice. And I loved feeling her bravery, as though she's saying, who cares if they judge my characters, if they think I'm a murderer, a bad mother, an over-sexualized manipulator, or a liar? Nobody was going to put her character down. Protecting who the character was and wanting them to be understood despite their choices. That was far before its time. But Stanwyck did it. And it's that kind of bravery that still inspires me to never categorize myself in the career choices that I made. 
This scene in Stella Dallas is the most incredible lesson in acting. Just watch the way she plays this moment. She's watching her own daughter, who she loves more than anything in the world, get married through a window. She's basically given up her daughter because she wants her to be brought up in a manner that she believes she can't provide because she's so beaten from being one of the have-nots. You too, lady. Oh, please, let me see her face when he kisses her, please. And that is just so beautiful. She comes with more dignity in her little finger than any rich woman ever could, and yet she still thinks that she has to ask permission to watch her daughter deliver her vows. Ugh, that is what's so heartbreaking about that moment. You've just learned everything you need to know about her character. And it's so understated and so human. It's just one of the great performances of all time. That movie kills me. With style and grace and energy and simple truth. With brilliant humor, going from genre to genre, she transformed herself into all characters, a filmmaker first as an actor. That really speaks to her profound gift. She's the every woman, and she's our screen legend. And in my office to this day, I stare at a picture of Barbara Stanwyck on my wall. She's my inspiration. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Laura Dern. Seductress Barbara Stanwyck goes from working the room to conquering an entire office building in Babyface, Thursday at 3.30 p.m., only on Turner Classic Movies.